How did I end up turning this friendly looking code into that monstrosity? That is a great question. It all started over a month ago when I was writing and researching a video on decorators that has yet to be released. I've stumbled and experimented looking for perfect ways to explain the intricacies and avoid mistakes. It was a bloodbath. But then I've noticed something. Decorators in Python don't have to return a function, they don't even have to return a callable or a class. They can literally return anything. And no matter what they return, it will be assigned to the variable with the name that the original function had. You might think it's obvious, but at that point it felt big. A stepping stone towards something greater than I could have ever imagined. But it wasn't just big. It was terrifying. I continued working on the tutorial. It was getting longer and longer, and the nights became darker and darker. I kept my discovery hidden from the world. I knew it was too dangerous to touch. I've made other videos, coded other things. But wherever I would go, whatever I would do, the thought would be still lurking in the back of my head. What if... I replaced every Python language concept with decorators. I knew it was impossible, but the urge was relentless. I needed to know. But Python hates functional programming. A voice of sanity kept whispering. My head was already captured by a sight of a city of dark towers constructed around elevators lifting the values from a parasitized corpses of functions higher and higher until they reach the end and fall down only to replace its host, keeping nothing but the name. I was already lost. Before all the changes, it was a peaceful game of snake in the making, structured by an AI of the time and not fully finished, but still a perfect victim for the touch of cursed curiosity. The first symbol that got corrupted was naturally assignment. I infected the host function with a tiny fungi-like lambda. This proved successful so I've decided to move forward. I've replaced the lambda with a custom decorator I called value. It still looked like Python at the time, but I knew it wouldn't last long. It became a staple of this new civilization. But it wasn't enough. Every game has a loop around it. It twists and repeats like Urovorus knowing its own tale. The grove begged for recurrence, but I knew its fascination with functional languages would soon become its demise. Python doesn't clear the tomorrow's expansion of recurrence. It lets it grow longer and larger until it collapses under its own weight. I knew I needed something else. The answer could only be found in the library. Iterators. Infinite iterators. I took the simplest one, not daring to reach any further. Count. However, there is a problem with iterators. They're slothful to the point where the only thing that can move them is an explicit order. For the time being, I used list as a decorator to get them to move. That was only a temporary solution. Lists would grow infinitely as the game progresses, although the expansion was slow, so I wasn't too bothered by it. The problem was the game state. Oh yes, every game has to have a state. And in this case it was supposed to be a data class. Another decorator. 
Python didn't even notice that the attributes I provided were in reality decorator infested functions. Passing it to the update would turn out to be harder than I initially anticipated. Yes, I could have just created a variable, but I was already wary of the poor simple value. I wanted to push the state through the pipe. That was a mistake. Type checker was already screaming in pain. And I've missed the fact that what I pushed through was not an instance, but a class. It worked, but was not what I wanted. I knew there must have been another way. There are other worlds and other lands with their own programming languages. The largest one at the time was JavaScript. This is where I first stumbled upon the concept of a reducer. It felt almost alchemical in its nature. They took an iterator and mixed it with itself until it became a single value. They use it in JavaScript for managing state changes over time, which was exactly what I needed. I first carried reduce to make sure it fit with the overall structure, and then I provided the iterator and the initial state. It was beautiful in its sick and twisted way. The corruption was growing faster. Ifs were becoming dictionaries, constants were properties, functions would be viciously carried, sometimes even multiple times. The game was working. But evil is not something you can contain. It feeds on weakness, and I was getting weaker with every changed line. It wanted everything. It wanted a monad. I knew it from the very beginning. When years ago I heard about functional programming. When I first heard about Haskell. When I fiendishly put pipes in every poor and withered language. It was always me. I was the one who did that. I record this video no longer as a man, but as one of them. I wish I could go back to the times of loops and if statements, but that time is long gone. This is the last time you hear from me.